Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for being here with us today uh, for this fantastic panel. I've got to, to take a little peek at these papers, and uh, you are in for uh, some really wonderful studies of our subject today. Uh, so the title of the panel is From the Margins of the Republic, Contemporary France and French Hip Hop, 1982 to 2021. My name is Christy Picicaro, and I'm an associate Associate Professor of History and French at George Mason University, and I have the distinct honor of chairing this panel. So uh, we have four wonderful papers for you, and so I will introduce each speaker and their paper title before uh, we have them share their work. So today we'll be starting with Dr. Uh, Melanie Barbier. She is an adjunct professor of French language at Bentley University in Waltham, Massachusetts. She completed her PhD in French studies uh, from the University of California, Davis in 2019. Her academic interests center around questions of identity and belonging in society and politics. Her current work considers the potential of music to foster political and social cohesion and rebellion in France. Her other interests include diversity and inclusion work at Bentley University and Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Her paper today is entitled Dominant and Counter Discourses of National Identity and Political Engagement in French Rap and Hip Hop. Hey, thank you. I think I can remove the, map, uh, the mask. So, um, how I came to this work is I began wondering why Chanson Engagée exists in France. Uh, and the more I thought about Chanson Engagée, the more I thought about how with people insisting that Chanson Engagée ends in 1981. And I argue uh, that rap kind of picks up where, um, where our traditional notions of Chanson Engagée leaves off. So rap and hip hop music in France don't typically fit the criteria for Chanson Engagée in, con uh, in contemporary French culture. This is because they are perceived as existing outside the traditional bounds of French identity. However, rap and hip-hop music are essentially French genres, as far removed from their American cousins as French rock and folk, um, which are often included in dominant discourses of a French identity, like um, uh, La Nouvelle Vague de Chanson Française, for example, takes a lot of uh, influence from American music. Um, as such, they provide a clarifying counter discourse to dominant discourses of state unity through the universalist republican values and challenge the state to re-examine the inclusiveness of the whole monde national and the reality of liberté, égalité, fraternité for all citizens. The dominant discursive practices of the state in France become paradoxical, paradoxical excuse me, in that they focus primarily on promoting and policing universalism and republicanism as the national symbolic but ignore and neglect the nation's colonial past and subsequent national multiculturalism that is always already existed in the Fifth Republic and as I learned yesterday in medieval times. Uh, French rappers claim their French citizenship and identity while giving voice to the racist and classist conditions in France, including institutionalized racism and everyday microaggressions that they face at the hands of the Republic and its citizens. The post-colonial paradox is that these counter discourses are perceived in dominant discourse as an attack on the Republic itself. It's used as evidence for the otherness or foreignness of these individuals and spaces, further disenfranchising these communities and, at worst, positing them as enemies of the state. For example, in L'Affaire Antéem, which I will discuss uh, um, a little later, or Ministère Amère, Sacrifice de Poulet, or the polemique um, between Youssefa and um, Eric Zamour. Uh, rap and hip hop music uh, that is socially and politically engaged stands out as a kind of chanson engagée that provides a counter discourse to dominant discourses of social inclusion that requires minoritized people to assimilate to an impossible standard of citizenship in the name of universalism. Or as Majid Cherfi, who is um, an author, singer, songwriter of the sort of reggae hip hop band Zebda, very popular in the, in the 1990s, um, my generation. Uh, in his novel, Ma Part de Gaulois, he says, L'exception française, c'est d'être français et de voir le devenir. 
French rap and hip hop music expose the tensions of the post-colonial paradox in which minoritized citizens are demanding the recognition that they are owed by the law in the name of universalism and republicanism in the face of dominant state discourses that use that universalism and republicanism to accuse them of willful non-compliance. This is different from the traditional forms of counter discourse of chanson engagée, in which the critique of Western or French culture is integrated into and derived from a national identity of intellectual working class struggles, particularly those forged in the historical memory of May 68. That, for the most part, for the most part, um, ignore topics of post-colonial integration. So my conceptualization of dominant and counter discourses come from Richard Turnerman's uh, student analysis of symbolic resistance in the 19th century. And while hip hop is quite different from Flaubert and, and um, Marx, there are some very um, helpful uh, overlap. According to Turnerman, dominant discourse is a discourse whose presence is defined by the social impossibility of its absence. It's unaware of the question of its own legitimacy. He continues that the dominant discourse thus comes to appear as the naturalized expression of social formation itself, as self-evident form of utterance, the system making, uh, the system of sense making, which precisely went without saying. Um, it can also be called uh, like Bourdieu called the establishment language, and de Sarto, uh, langue obligatoire. Kristeva calls um, it langue normalisée. Um, the, the dominant discourse appears within the social formation like an unmarked case in linguistics, noticed only by its violation, effective precisely because it seems to require no special assertion to achieve such um, efficacy. Turdeman acknowledges that dominant discourse is supported and propagated by the role of the state as administrator of civil society, national employer, national educator and defender, and it is capable, therefore, of imposing uniformity around practices harmonious with dominant interests. Therefore, the state is able to uphold certain structural myths, symbols, and imaginings of a national identity and a belonging that appear not only real, but self-evident. In uh, being such a totalitizing force, it is also open to vampirization or colonization. For example, the way in which the uh, far right in France takes on this totalization of French identity to its natural end in slogans like France pour les Français. It effectively makes an us versus them without having to acknowledge the complex histories and policies of France's multicultural reality. If dominant discourse is the ineffable stuff from which national identity is formed, it only seemingly, it's only seemingly material and real, but with no doubt real consequences for individuals subjected to them. Counter discourses then, um, and I quote Turdeman, are alternative liberating newness against the absorptive capacity of those established discourses. However, the paradox associated with projecting alternatives to dominant discourses is that the members of any culture, as they are, and I quote Turdeman, uh, submerged as we inevitably are in the functioning semiotic and practical systems which sustain our social existence, from within dominant discourse, difference nearly eludes us. We struggle for a language which might express it, but the fact, uh, but the very fact of its difference makes such language hard to seize. Our efforts to produce difference, the new, the subversive, the other, inevitably meet resistance that sustains the stability of all cultural systems. In other words, it is difficult to produce, produce counter discourse from within the social structure ruled by dominant discourse. Such is the case for French rappers for whom speaking their truth of their material reality is policed in dominant discourse as anti-French, uh, when it is fundamentally French discourse and, in fact, impossible for it to be anything other than French. Counter discourse becomes paradoxical because it cannot escape the confines of dominant discourse. Dominant discourses of national identity um, in France's Sixth Republic, or Fifth Republic, are heavily shaped from the national reconstruction that took place after the Second World War. The cultural field in post-war France was complex as the government sought to build strong, singular national identity to promote, promote national unity and pride, while at the same time, wartime ideological contestations and colonial tensions continuously threatened the legitimacy of, the national, of national identity. The economic prosperity of post-war France, known as les Grandes Glorieuses, in addition to mass production of consumer goods like radios, record players, and music albums, supported a growing youth culture like never before. 
from the cold roulé of the post-war intellectual left bank cabarets to the leather jackets worn in rock and roll discotheques, young people used musical preferences as a mean for self-regulation and social and political identification with increasing desire to reject the paternalistic republicanism of Gaullist France. The pinnacle of anti uh, the pinnacle of the anti-Gaullist social movements occurred during the student and labor strikes in May 1968, um, and those slogans and songs have become part of the national myth. I'm going to skip ahead. Um, so while discussing national identity, it is important to note that in France it is particularly intertwined with popular music. For example, David Loosely argues that French music is layered with an assumption about authenticity, which is that authenticity is also has to do with popular music's organic, historic connection with a people, or um, what he calls national authenticity, that is born and natural to and expressive of a national community. It is this focus of dominant discourse on this kind of national authenticity of art and specifically music that is endemic to France. Popular music in France is conceived as a product of um, aesthetically and nationally exceptional process. So while the working class youth and working class struggles of 1968 have been incorporated into the dominant discourse of French identity, this kind of authenticity was not extended to uh, rap and hip hop. During the, Mitter the Mitterrand administration, um, both he and his Minister of Culture, Jacques Lang, looked to music as a means of social integration. Um, for example, Lang writes that le, le, le patrimoine ne doit pas être réservé aux seules élites, il doit être l'affaire de toute la nation, exclu compris. However, the realization of these kinds of cultural programs came infused with colonial bias. Culture became the tool by which the excluded could assimilate into French culture, not an avenue for celebrating France's multiculturalism. For example, youth centers for dance and art became a new kind of modern mission civilatrice in the banlieue as a state-funded project of social integration. State cultural policy in the banlieue was made um, with a view towards offering cultural options that would be relatable for the populations who live there. The youth of these perceived disaffected neighborhoods were expected to dance in a formal cultural setting. However, when that dance was infused with what the state deemed in excess of their cultural project, uh, tagging, rapping, and gangsta culture, it was met with the full force of the law. Therein lies the paradoxical nature of the state's post-colonial project. The state wished to control the cultural environment by sanctioning popular culture, but in an objective of controlling a population that they saw as having a surplus of foreign culture. The social inclusion was only a goal insofar as les exclus could integrate into dominant French culture, which they had already done by the very nature of French universalism and republicanism. The focus of the state on dominant discourses of universalism leaves little space in discursive debates about the kinds of othering experiences that citizens and permanent residents face, namely institutionalized sexism and racism in France. In addition, dominant state discourses place the responsibility of cultural, social, economic integration on the individual. For immigrants, especially those from former colonies and territories, dominant state discourses tend towards erasing any responsibility on the part of the French government for complications and consequences of its colonial past. The problematic discursive and political spaces where the state marginalized citizens meet are circumvented in the policy arena due to state reliance on universalism and republicanism. This is represented, for example, in politics of the banlieue, Cité ou HLM, so that's Saint-Saint-Denis and Quartier Nord de Marseille. Saint-Saint-Denis and the um, Ile de France. Uh, in France, these spaces have a discursive and ideological mythology of their own. These concepts have become laden with meaning that goes beyond the physical spaces of these areas. The utterances of these terms, just saying HLM or Cité ou Banlieue, conjures a space and its inhabitants, their culture, their religion, and a daily life that is particularly othered space outside of the bounds of French inclusion. The prevailing dominant discourse of the state understands this difference as an act of resistance and a purposeful and willful rejection of the French state and French culture. The way the terms are used, um, especially in politics and the media, it is as if the banlieue is not France. The perceived real, um, the perceived and real connections of rap and hip-hop music to the banlieue have led to a number of misrepresentations of the genre. For example, some associate rap with a glorification of American-style gang culture, gun violence, and criminal activity. 
This interconnects with stereotypes of the banlieue and banlieusards as violent racailles, casseurs. Many of the polémiques involving the state and French rappers revolved around what the state. Oh, there's what. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, what the state. Uh, where am I? Steve perceived as an excess of violence and extra legal activity associated with rap culture that mirrored their perception of violence and delinquency in the banlieue. The kind portrayed in Lyon, for example, uh, rappers found themselves not just censored, but charged with hate crimes and earned um, hefty fines. And so I'll talk about La Ferentaine. Uh, La Ferentaine is an important event uh, in the history of rap and hip hop. It's on July 14th, 1995, Bastille Day. Um, it's a, it was a concert called the Concert de Liberté, which is organized um, in the south of France between Toulon and Orange, who have just uh, at this time elected uh, mayors from the Na uh, Front National, the far right, uh, extreme right uh, party in France. Um, and however, it instead um, kind of became a symbol for um, fighting free speech. So during their set at the concert, um, so music lyrics in France are protected as free speech, but the things that you say in interviews or um, in between the songs at your concert are not protected as artistic free speech. And so that is exactly what got Supreme NTM um, in trouble. During their set, the two num members of NTM, or Supreme NTM, Kouchan and Joystar, were found guilty of orally abusing the security forces present at the concert venue while introducing their song Police during the Concert de Liberté performance. The group was sentenced to three months jail time, fined 50,000 francs, and received a six-month ban on all public performances and professional activity during the year of the trial, resulting in thousands of francs lost in revenue from touring, promoting, and recording. All of this for saying, les fascistes sont habillés en bleu, en bleu, oh, oh pardon. Les fascistes sont habillés en bleu et roulent, euh, sorry, I lost my... Ils roulent par toi dans les Renault 19. Ils attendent que ça pète en couille pour nous taper sur la gueule. On leur pisse dessous. Ok, so not very um, astute or, uh, you know, uh, highbrow commentary, but it's no less um, shocking than Georges Brassens uh, where in which a judge is sodomized, right? So these kind of things are not particularly extremely uh, grossière, comparatively speaking, to other sort of chansons engagées. The severity of their sentencing caused a public outrage, and so now I'm just going to kind of end with um, wrap it all up with some quotations. These are quotations from students um, in the magazine L'Express about uh, an article about Le Faire in TM. Um, and these are just students in Saint-Saint-Denis that are um, quoted and they say, one says, Franchement, il nous prend pour des imbéciles en pensant que en écoutant NTM, on va casser les gueules des fric, fric, euh, flics. Another one says, NTM, ça incite plutôt à réfléchir sur les drogues, la délinquance, sur la réalité de nos banlieues. Uh, another said, si la haine des flics était postérieure à l'événement du rap, ça se saurait. Une chanson ne résout pas une malaise, mais elle peut aider à prendre conscience d'un problème. Condamné à trois mois, trois mois de prison des chanteurs, c'est démesuré. Il n'est pas condamné Le Pen pour ses propos racistes, là c'est dramatique. So they understand, even these students, these children, uh, children, the, um, these people that are living in um, these neighborhoods, they understand the complexity and the contextualization. I, I find these to be quite astute analysis um, from, from, from people that understand sort of the, the, the context, the, the bigger political context under which um, these songs are being uh, sung and being uh, challenged. Um, and then from the, um, this is from a uh, documentary called Saveur Bitune, which uh, was on, which is a, a partnership, I think, of France 2. And um, the rapper Kerry James, um, he says, uh, Le chômage, la discrimination sociale, raciale, la discrimination territoriale a plus de conséquences sur ce qui passe dans le banlieue que des rappeurs. Déjà, un, ça c'est un fait. Uh, passif from Minister Amer. 
He says, les politiques n'ont jamais compris. D'un certaine manière, on cherchait à prévenir, on cherchait de l'amour d'un certaine manière. On cherchait un échange, on cherchait à appartenir à un groupe, à appartenir à un pays, être reconnu. Jamais les politiques disent aux banlieusards qu'ils sont français, qu'ils ont une place, qu'ils ont leur avenir, qu'on compte sur eux, qu'il qu y ait une place pour eux et qu'on les aime. And uh, Yusufa, he says, reprocher en permanence au rap français d'être anti-France, c'est un bêtise énorme. Déjà, on a toujours rendu compte à quel point les rappeurs français eux-mêmes, dans leurs chansons, disent rap français, rap français, rap français. On pourrait dire rap tout court. And, um, and then I just want to end with this quote. Um, this comes from Charles, Az Charles Aznavour. Excuse me. Um, and he, he, uh, there was a special Charles Aznavour, and for those of you who don't know who he is, he's a chansonnier, a very, very, very popular post-war chansonnier. He's kind of like the pinnacle of Brel, Brassens, kind of in that era of post-68 um, chansonnier. And um, he invited Carrie James uh, to, to, to per, um, perform um, on this special for him that was like honoring him and um, when uh, Michel Drucker who is the special's host asked as nouveau to talk about Carrie James he says il y a dix ans que la chanson française à l'heure actuelle a un avantage fantastique c'est que les rappeurs et les slammeurs écrivent merveilleusement bien notre langue et je dois on peut les applaudir because there's applaudissements that was really it was like on cue um, on pense toujours que cette jeunesse ne connaît pas la chanson, au contraire, elle les connaît très très bien, mais elle veut s'exprimer d'une manière différente. Et je trouve qu'il y a une floraison de auteurs, compositeurs et interprètes, which I should say, the auteur, compositeur, interprète is kind of the gold standard of chanson. Rappeurs et slammeurs qui sont formidables aujourd'hui, je, je dois dire que les leaders de tout cela, euh, celui qui, a, qui émerge en tête, c'est Carrie James. Si vous allez l'entendre, écoutez surtout attentivement les paroles. Vous allez voir comment c'est bien écrit, comment c'est beau et comment c'est français. Merci. Thank you.